everyone. I'm the editor-in-chief of the FDU Equinox, Elizabeth Scalzo. Most of you know me as L. and today I am here interviewing our new deputy chairman for the communications department who will be overseeing the Metropolitan Campus Communication Department, um, Dr. Christopher Caldero. It's very nice to meet you and to have you here today with us. Thank you, Elle. It's very nice to meet you as well. Ha I'm happy to be here with you. So I just wanted to start off and ask if you could tell us a little bit about your educational background, how you eventually ended up at FDU. Sure. Um, well, I have a bachelor's degree in broadcasting from Montclair State. And uh, after that, uh, I went to work at, in television and I worked for CBS Sports for about 10 years. But uh, ever since I was a teenager, I wanted to be a teacher. So after a successful career in television, I decided to go back to graduate school to become a professor. So I got my master's degree again from Montclair State in communication. And then I got my PhD from Rutgers uh, in communication as well, although the focus there was more on public relations. And then I came to FDU uh, and this is, this fall will be the start of my 15th academic year here. So it's been a while. And um, even though I worked professionally in television uh, because my graduate education was very public relations focused, that's really been my specialty for teaching. And so one of my many duties, one of the many hats I wear in our department is I'm the coordinator for our public relations concentration, which currently only exists at the Florham campus. And that's how I ended up uh, where I am. And this is my first year as uh, appointed as deputy chair of the department. Yeah, um, I was very excited to get that email from Dr. Gary Radford and then to write the article announcing it to our community. Great. So you had mentioned that you are a professor. What courses did you teach at FDU throughout your... Yeah, there's, there's been a lot. I mean, I've taught probably upwards of, say, 12 different undergraduate classes, probably two or three different graduate classes. Uh, as I said, most of my undergraduate work has been in public relations classes like public relations principles, PR writing, PR campaigns, uh, crisis communication, which is a very specific form of um, public relations and, and one that has been the focus of a lot of my uh, scholarly research, including my book, which is called uh, Neo PR, Public Relations in a Postmodern World. And that was published in 2015. And so beyond my public relations classes, I've taught a number of uh, other required communication classes like our perspectives on communication, um, which is kind of like an intro to comm type class for our students. Uh, again, this was all at Florham. Uh, since I started here in my 15 years, I've been based in Florham and will continue to be based there. However, my my operations and a number of my responsibilities as deputy chair involve the Metro campus. Um, I've also taught classes like uh, popular culture and media, um, communication research methods, which I've taught for a number of classes. So it's been a wide variety, everything from classes that all comm majors would take to those specific types of classes that um, public relations concentration students would take. So as um, the new deputy chair, mm -hmm. what do you say you're most excited for with the kind of uniting of programs? We kind of had this whole like entire campus uniting amongst many different departments where right. our programs align more. Yeah, it's been an exciting yet challenging time, um, you know, because since I started here at FDU many, many years ago, about 15 years ago, as you well know, even be, you know, even long before you were here, I'm sure, Elle, uh, the two campuses in many ways operated almost like two different colleges or two different mm -hmm. universities, even though we were under the same banner. And for the most part, that didn't cause too many headaches or problems because students, you know, either were based at Florham or Metro. But our administration and our leadership, President Capuano, uh, Provost Small, have over the last couple of years initiated a strategic plan that combines many programs on the two campuses to make us more of one university, which is really what we are under the FDU banner. So as such, because the two, in this case, communication programs have existed on separate campuses for so long, there were many differences. There are many differences. 
And so one of the main challenges over the last year or so has been to uh, kind of go through all that, see what we common, our specialities are at the two campuses. Uh, and a lot of that, of course, is based on the expertise of the faculty themselves. Um, and eventually, after a lot of collaboration and work with my colleagues in the department and under the leadership of our chair, Dr. Gary Radford, uh, we've come up with a program where there are similarities and classes that exist on both campuses and students can, if they needed to uh, or wanted to take um, at either campus. And then we've got our little special uh, specialities uh, that uh, exist either on Florum, for example, public relations. If you wanna be a communication major and have a public relations concentration, you would uh, come to the Florum campus. If you wanted to be a comm major with a digital media concentration, you would attend the Metro campus. So again, that was, a, that was largely based on what we were good at, what we had taught and what students had become familiar with along with the expertise and education of our, our faculty. And we're still, it's still a growth process, right? We're still working on it. We're still trying to refine it. Um, the pandemic and the COVID-19, the remote learning has made it all the more challenging. So um, interesting is probably an understatement. Yeah, um, that actually kind of leads me into my next question with you mentioning COVID is sure. because of communications being a very hands-on environment with a lot of courses, specifically like radio and TV broadcasting. Yeah. The, I'm assuming the hopes are that we can have those classes back in the spring, but what is there like plans in the works for if, you know, we do have to be partially remote, God forbid, that yeah. then still do courses of those degree? Yeah, so let me say a couple of things about that. Um, this is an ongoing plan. This is an ongoing uh, project, if you will, in terms of future planning. Um, as you might know, or as you might suspect, the main traditional differences between the Florumcom program and the Metrocom program was, as you mentioned, the kind of hands-on dynamic. The Metro program has had traditionally many more studio type classes, whether it be radio or video production. Whereas in, uh, at Metro, we've approached it a bit more from a theoretical perspective, which as you might suspect is the more traditional classroom. Now, uh, again, I would, I would suggest that that, those, that kind of environment serves itself a little bit better for the online remote learning. Whereas, as you said, the concern for radio production, video production, hard to do in your living room or your basement or where your dorm or wherever you're coming from. So these are challenges that we have to face and that we have to plan out. And then the, the, the added icing on the cake, if you will, is the continued uncertainty about all this. Particularly now that we've started the fall semester, what the spring semester really will be like. Of course, we're all hopeful. We were hopeful this semester uh, that we would be back in the classroom and that, you know, things would be better than they were back in March and April when this whole pandemic kind of really reached our shores. Um, as you know, over the summer, our initial plan at FDU was to come back to classrooms in mid-September. And then that kind of washed away, uh, given the health, the legitimate health concerns. Now it's a question of what will happen come January and February, right, which is our next planning phase. So these are things myself and my colleagues are working out, trying to uh, better get a grip on, uh, particularly with regard to production classes, all the while understanding that as soon as you have a plan, somebody comes and upsets the apple cart and you have to have a new plan because you know, something was unexpected. So hopeful optimism is uh, sometimes the only thing we have to hang on to. Yeah. Um, so recently within the communications department like whenever i first came in i will be i'm a junior this year um the concentrations were completely different in some aspects um as like convergent journalism has kind of shifted into multimedia journalism specifically but is there going to be kind of like substitutions for courses then if there are like what was traditionally offered prior to the switch yeah in order for students to 
Yeah, I mean, what, our main focus in, in all of this change, and then like I said, this added layer of the remote learning and the fact that faculty and, and chairs like myself and, and administrators can't even really get into the office to kind of deal in a more comfortable traditional environment where we have access to paperwork and files and things like that. So it's, it's that much more challenging. But with regard to course substitutions, our main focus really is to help students get through the program and graduate. Students are priority number one. They always have been, they always will be, regardless of the, the circumstances. So it's again, it's a plan that's in development, something that we talk about it on a regular basis. I know that some of my colleagues have already had to um, initiate course substitutions for classes this semester, and I suspect that'll continue. Uh, I've referenced a couple of times the icing on the cake. Well, the little cherry on top of the Sunday here is that we've had recently some uh, faculty changes. We've had a couple of people in the program leave the university. So uh, that adds to the challenge of uh, making sure that our students, which again are priority number one, get through the program, get the courses they need, meet the requirements that we've set out for them. So uh, I guess the short answer to your question is yes. Will there be more course substitutions? I'm sure. We try to limit that obviously, because it's not only a headache for the students, but for the faculty as well. But we're never gonna hold a student back and say, you can't graduate because we're not gonna allow a particular course substitution that's legitimate. You know, we, we wanna get students through the program. And if that takes some students um, uh, taking some course, you know, asking for a course substitution and being granted it, then, you know, so be it. Okay, thank you. Um, and then sure. something that some of my um, fellow comm majors, specifically at the Equinox, we've been talking about mm -hmm. is that we are offered to do internships um, as part of our degree audit. It can constitute for credit. So since there's like kind of a lack of internships, is there also the opportunity to do like an independent study with a specific professor? Requirements. Yeah, that's an excellent question. And again, something that's been recent, you know, recently talked about amongst myself and my colleagues when we have department meetings. Uh, let me just preface what I'm about to say by the fact that one of the differences, traditional differences between Florham and Metro, and I'm not sure you're aware of this, but um, at Metro for many, many years, um, at Florham rather, for many, many years, uh, communication majors have been required to take a uh, three credit internship. Um, it wasn't just an option. It was literally a required course, if you will, even though it's obviously not a traditional class. Metro hasn't operated that way. Um, as you said, as you correctly said, students were allowed to take, I think, up to six credits of internship, but that was optional. Students could complete the bachelor's degree without ever having taken a, a, an internship. So that has been a major difference between the two programs. We haven't arrived at a, um, I'll use the word solution, even though that's not the right word, but um, it's not settled yet whether or not it will ever be the case that Metro students are required to take an internship or for that matter, that forum students, you know, it becomes optional. Um, it may just be the case that that kind of separation, you know, exists. And, you know, let me just reference something I said earlier. Yes, we are one program. Yes, we are doing all of this collaboration and combination between the two programs, but there will always be distinct differences between the programs because, you know, they just don't even operate in the same geographic location. So it's all right if ultimately something is decided, like perhaps the internship issue that, um, you know, students on one campus or in one part of the program are required to do it, others perhaps not, but we're still talking through that. But with regard to the independent study, this is a challenge again. It's, um, it's difficult for uh, students and perhaps even more so faculty to, uh, let's say, uh, take on too many independent studies because we take them seriously. We wanna give that kind of focused attention to an individual student that's taking one, but we have our full classes too. So if a professor, let's say has three classes that has many students in, in each class, and then has, oh, you know, gosh, pick a number, three, five, seven independent studies with individual students, 
it's quite a quite a workload. Uh, of course, the students, you know, have their own challenges in that regard, but but it's particularly onerous on the on the on the uh, the faculty, and therefore, it has been kind of the again traditions probably not the right word, but let let me put it this way: faculty try to avoid taking on too many independent studies. Nonetheless, they happen. Uh, and they'll continue to happen. Uh, I think. <clears throat> the middle ground is here, you know, uh, working with students on independent studies when that might be the only option or, or the student is, let's say, pressed up against graduation and, you know, needs a particular course or, or, or requirement and a class isn't being offered. Uh, so ironically or interestingly, you know, my uh, department chair, Dr. Radford and myself, just this, just this morning, we're working on our continue to work on the spring 21 schedule believe it or not uh, that that kind of information is like already due to the the higher ups that that need to start planning for it um and that's a point of discussion here what classes can we offer at metro that allow juniors and seniors like yourself to take the classes they need to finish not just the degree but also certain concentrations and again, the fact that we've had a few faculty members, unfortunately, um, move on from the university, particularly some faculty members who were specialists in a particular line of study or concentration, this is adding to the uh, complexity of our planning. Um, I suppose I could wrap up the answer by just suggesting that uh, I think I can say with some confidence that if a student needs, the operative word being needs, right, requires an independent study to get through the program, we're going to work with that student and, and to our best ability make that happen. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah. As you had mentioned, there were some faculty changes specifically. Yeah. Metro. So I was just wondering logistically comparing like Metro to Florham, um, how many tenured professors are at each campus and then adjuncts at each campus. I don't know if you have the exact numbers, but. Yeah, I don't have the exact number for adjuncts. I can give you estimates. I certainly have the exact numbers for either tenure track or tenured faculty. And then I also know the count for our lecturers. Lecturers are an important part of our staff and our, fa our faculty, really. They're full-time faculty members, uh, but aren't considered what, you know, in academia we call tenure track or tenured faculty. Um, Currently, as it stands, given the very recent changes that you as a student at Metro, I'm sure you're aware of, uh, but others that, that may be viewing or reading this interview may not be aware of, currently at Florham, we have four tenured faculty members and two senior lecturers. The number of adjuncts, oh my goodness gracious, many, uh, tens of them. Uh, that number goes up and down based on the semester and the, the number of classes that we have adjuncts teaching. Sometimes an adjunct teaches a class and then doesn't teach another class for us for a couple of years. Other adjuncts teach for us with some regularity every, every semester. Again, currently at the Metro campus, given the very recent changes, we have one tenured faculty member and one senior lecturer. Now, again, because we're considered a combined department now, I really look at the total numbers, right? And we say, well, there's, there's five tenured faculty, there's three senior lecturers, so that makes for eight of us. There was 10 of us uh, earlier this year. So, you know, pretty dramatic changes. And something else that we're trying to work through, because again, our number one priority on both campuses is to service the students' needs and programs and to get you guys graduated successfully on time. Um, now, I can't speak to issues of faculty replacement or new hires. That's a bit above my pay grade um, and also goes into budgetary questions that I, I neither have the answer to uh, nor the power to control. Um, but I can say with confidence, again, we're working the best with what we've got. We're our current students, our students to be, especially Friday semester are going to have a six, very successful uh, time here. Are there changes on the horizon? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I seem to have, have a little bit. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I, I had a little pop-up about my internet connection. Um, 
but it seems to be okay now. Um, are there changes on the horizon in both programs? Or I should say, you know, kind of as one department, almost certainly. And, you know, COVID is no small part of that. Uh, but again, given the uncertainty, I can't tell you with any degree of confidence what things will look like in spring of 21, fall of 21, spring of 22, um, and so forth and so on. So we've got a great team. We've got very smart people on this particular departmental faculty. We've got great leadership in Dr. Radford. We've got um, very, uh, all of our faculty, all eight of us have many, many years here at FDU. Uh, and while we're stinging from the loss of two recent uh, veterans of our department as well, uh, we have the utmost confidence that we're going to pull through this and, and be more successful than ever as a department. Just to wrap things up, I did sure. ask, I know the, the communications department, um, the number of students at Metro is pretty small. We pretty much all know each other. I was wondering how many students are also at the Forum campus. Then. Yeah, without, and, and without, fully knowing the freshman numbers that just started and also without having a, a, more of a, a pretty good guesstimate. Um, it's about a four to one um, ratio. In other words, there are about four times more uh, comm majors at Florham. And hence, that's the reason for the bigger faculty too. Uh, even before these faculty departures that I've referenced a few times, uh, the faculty was smaller, always smaller than the Florham campus. Uh, as I s understand it, the number of Metro comm majors currently is approximately 40, mm -hmm. give or take. Um, the number of Florum comm majors is approximately 170 or 165, something like that. So that's the four to one kind of uh, four times ratio. Those numbers tend to ebb and flow and dip and go up and go down. Um, but that's, that's an, a pretty good approximation. So you're right. The Metro program or the Metro, uh, Metro element of the program is, uh, you know, significantly smaller and always has been for a, a myriad of reasons, but, but it certainly has nothing to do with the quality of either the program or the faculty that have been at Metro for many years. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to speak with the Equinox. Um, we look forward to working with you as the new deputy chair at the Metro campus. Yeah, me too, Al, and I appreciate it. And by the way, I, I was a little surprised you didn't ask any questions about the Equinox itself or the pillar over it. Not that I'm the expert, because actually yeah. we have another esteemed faculty.